now we can start the celebration. Podcast One brings you the Tony now Bruno Show. We can start the podcast. The Easy to work. Find new podcasts from room to room. Tony Starring show. Tony Bruno with Miss Robin. You love the taste of your snacks you have to offer. Now, here he is. The godfather of sports radio slash podcast. I hope you can come here and the godfather of Here's Tony Bruno. Tony Bruno. Everybody, welcome. It is the podcast, Tony Bruno and the whole gang. And we start off by thanking the city of Toronto <laughs> and uh, telling them to just basically get the hell out of my life. <laughs> Go up there, do your drugs, do whatever it is you do up there. Just stay out of my face with that crazy stuff. <laughs> so I, I say this because, you know, I live in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, one person does something stupid at a game, the entire the universe city gets ripped. Toronto had hundreds of fans misbehaving in that uh, championship series in the, in the National League, the American League Divisional Series. And it's just a crazy, crazy series between Texas and Toronto. And it all came off the rails in a crazy game five. But I got to rip the Toronto uh, Blue Jay fans. I know they won a World Series. This is nothing about Mitch Williams and Joe Carter and that World Series. It's just about fans being idiots. And Toronto fans, I'm going to put you in the mix with fans from every other city. You're a bunch of animals. You're a bunch of a bunch of Canadian hicks. I know you got nothing up there else to do. What do you got? The CFL, the Toronto Argonauts. What do you have? The Maple Leafs, who haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1967. What else you got? Oh, you got the Raptors. That's right. They're pretty good though. The Raptors, aren't they, Luigi? Or they, do they stink? Yeah, they're getting better. Yeah, they yeah. stink. All Toronto stinks, and I've been up there. It's I a have pretty to. area. It stinks. <laughs> Toronto, you stink. Were they booing Santa? What was going on there? I mean, they were booing, they... Uh, they were, I think they were booing Sergeant Preston who had to come down and get rid of the fans. <laughs> then they brought in uh, Dudley Do-Right had to come in. Then they had to bring, I thought cops, they thought they didn't like guns in, in Canada. Yeah, they were, they were All the cops were out armed. there, they're bringing in horses. That's right. They're bringing in, uh, Sarah Palin, I think, made a trip from, Al from Alaska to go and, and check she could, in. She could see Russia from the left field bleachers, I think. I think Brian Boitano showed up, too. too. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And Drake was there. Yes, he was. And there was a throwdown with Drake, I believe. Yes. And it was a couple of other gangster rappers, <laughs> and they all killed each other, and we all lived happily ever after. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Tony Bruno. Miss Robin is here. Luigi's head is exploding, but yes, it's been exploding sorry. for a couple of weeks, actually. And the great Joe Corrado's here. And yes, Nathaniel. Yes. A man who realized that being in Philadelphia, there's only one way to get west <laughs> or east of the suburbs, and that is the worst road ever created. Ever created. Ever. Ever created. A road that was obsolete the second the architects it drew it because they had no room for expansion. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? It's sort of like a softball player on a Sunday afternoon's pants. That's right. <laughs> no room for expansion. You ever see these guys, the beer league guys? <laughs> Yeah. I, just, I just realized what you said. Yeah, that's a good uh, comparison there. I never heard that one. Jeez. And so every time Robin that's and I different. are on there, every time Robin and I drive the Schuylkill Expressway to go west and there's an accident, uh, there's only two to, lanes. Just put the car just, neutral. Why don't they build a second deck yeah. on top and have it two ways? Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. have it up by the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think this is, Japan, where they could do that in a couple yeah, the, of weeks? the blue route took a thousand years. Like, I they know. built the pyramids quicker than that. Exactly right. I mean, you've seen what the Jap Japanese can do oh, after, yeah. the, after the earthquake and yeah. after the tsunami. You would never know it. They, ha they, even, they even built roads while the roads were still functioning. Oh, yeah. They have, like, this thing that goes no over a road, mm -hmm. and it just builds sections at a time. I mean, it's exactly. just amazing. They do can't everything. Do they even convinced us that eating raw fish is good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's <laughs> how amazing the Japanese are. That that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I, know. Yeah. I eat it not just me. for the halibut. Well, they haven't. Oh. They have not convinced you of that. No. It's the seventh time that joke has made this spot. <laughs> 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 It's no fluke. I'm keeping it going. Oh. 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 I just want you to know I am doing this podcast heavily medicated. I noticed. Flexerol, uh, not oxycodone. I have that. But I usually just sell that on Craigslist to stoners right. up in the Not Northeast. Viagra, right? No, I don't have any. I don't All have right. any Viagra. 
I don't have any herbal Viagra. Or, or herbal or Viagra. Herbal. I was going to say, it's in the news today. Yeah. I know. Yes. It's so sad. Yes. Why would, you get, why would you get herbal Viagra when you can get the real thing? Oh, it's gluten-free. They, they sell it like 7-Eleven, don't they? Is that? I don't yeah, know. I, think I, isn't it, like yeah. I mean, seriously, isn't it called horny goat weed? Yeah, horny isn't, goat weed. You can buy isn't it. Isn't that what it is? Buy it really? anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. How do I know this lingo? I never, I never heard any of that. I don't either. I don't And why are goats involved? Exactly. Because. Why not? Because men are goats. And women are what? Yeah, what are women? Venus. Actually, Tony, Tony definitely is a goat. <laughs> People call him that all the time. There you go. Meanwhile, we got a fun uh, podcast for you today. Well, thanks, everybody, who's listening on Mixler. Yes. Mixler.com. M-I-X-L-R.com slash Tony Bruno Show. That's where you can hear us live, as we like to say so many, many times. They actually said that in The Walking Dead. Really? In the premiere episode, season six premiere. Did you watch it the other night? No, I did not. I didn't either. Oh, I hate to do it to you guys right after the bat, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. I was watching Monday Night Football. <laughs> I think we were talking about the 49ers, It was on man. Sunday night, actually. I, I was watching it. Sunday Night Football, man. <laughs> but I didn't watch it until last night. What was last night? Tuesday night. Wednesday night. night Tuesday I night watched football. it on Tuesday night. You know, because you know what my other options were? What's that? The debate. The, well, the yeah, Democrats well, then, debate. Obviously, either that or So I'd rather watch real zombies yes, exactly. on, the, on The Walking Dead. <laughs> right. And they had Instead of zombies with lobbyists. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So anyway, I was watching The Walking Dead, and the and and one of the in the early scenes, they they the zombies are all there's thousands of zombies, and one guy screams, "We'll do it live!" Yes, wow. yes. I need to. I should have pulled that clip. I know. Really? Damn we'll it. do it live. He screamed. Okay. No. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Nope. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of sucks, that guy Dyson for the uh, Texas Rangers, yes. he sucks, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incidentally. Does he suck or blow? I don't know. <laughs> Depends on what you have it set on, Tom. Depends on what inning it is. Meanwhile, we got a lot of football chatter tonight, too. Of course, the baseball playoffs. The Cubs are in. Yes. Cubs are in. The National Goodbye, League Goodbye, baseball champion. heaven. Exactly. Gone. I'd like to thank the St. Louis Cardinals yes. for participating. Yeah, and their bullpen for Keep running out, you know, 40-year-old guys and think you're going to win pennants every year with Jamie Garcia. Right. And, uh, That's Jaime Garcia, the guys like you and me. Uh, I know. <laughs> now, with the Cubs being in, you know that there's something kind of freaky going on with that, right? Uh, well, you know well, what also it is, before we get into the freaky part of the Cubs being in the National League champion, you know, that was the first time they ever won a home series. That is series. unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. That was the At first home. time when yeah, they beat Wrigley. the Cardinals Unreal. in the NLDS that they ever won a series at home Unreal. in the postseason. Yeah, because even Unreal. even after the curse, they were still in the playoffs. And right. the fact that they never won but a they never series won at there. home, that's, yeah. that's exactly. incredible. I mean, Wrigley's yeah. been around for, what, 130 mm -hmm. years? And you know what else it is? It's the anniversary of Bartman, Steve Bartman. Oh, it's today. Today, today actually, it's today. Today. Oh, is it? October 14th, as we do this podcast, 12 yes. years ago, Steve Bartman was actually in foul territory. Yep. In the Wrigley Field bleachers. Moises Alou. And yep. Moises Alou is going to go grab a foul ball, mm -hmm. get the out, get the Cubs out of the inning. Instead, Bartman, just a nerdy fan. He was a nerd before nerds were cool. He was. He was on the cutting edge yeah, of nerdom. But the sad thing about Bartman is, though, is that everybody was going for that ball. Bartman just happened yeah, to yeah. be the guy to catch it. Yeah. And he and leaned you... over, and Moises Alou had a play on the foul ball. It would have been an out instead. And they called interference. The runner is safe. And then, of course, the Marlins go on and uh, rally and beat yep. the Cubs. And then go on and win. And beat the Yankees. And beat the Yankees mm -hmm. and win the World Series. So yep. Bartman is the guy that people, I mean, they, no one knows where he is anymore. No, well, they, recently they had something about him because the Cubs were back in it. He's well, actually, like, more accepted now. And well, they couldn't stuff. find him for a long yeah, time. Yeah, he went, uh, went his protection for a while, I think. He went all Bill Buckner. Yeah, it was like uh, Henry Hill. He went, exactly. away, he went away to school for a little while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, now he's one, back. The one thing that was horrifying for him was, if you if you remember when seeing the footage, he actually had headphones on. He mm -hmm. was listening to the feed on the radio, yes, yeah. and all they kept talking about was security coming around Bartman mm -hmm. or, or around this person. So uh, there's people throwing things. You know, he, all he's doing is sitting there in fear, and he's hearing everything that's going on around him. He's not hearing people booing him. He's hearing the commentators say they're amping up security. They're coming to get this. They're coming to get that. All the bad things that are being said. So he's got to be sitting there already mortified by what happened. He's probably worried about his life at that point. Right. Now, again, he's being blamed for costing the Cubs the World Series, but he didn't. He cost mm -hmm. them a chance at a pennant. Right. No one knows if they would have gone on to beat the Yankees in the World Series. Right. Or even if they had gone on and, and, and won that series against the Marlins in the National mm -hmm. League Championship Series. So Bartman, just like the Bill Buckner curse was finally oh, yeah. removed when they finally won. Right. And won a couple of World Series. Mm -hmm. The same thing will happen if the Cubs finally win. And, of course, Miss Robin was alluding to a movie that I don't even remember. But it was Back to the Future 2, right? Not the first one. Correct. I saw the first one. I never watched the second one. Right. First one was 85. I think it was 89. When the right. The first one. one, he goes back to the past. Correct. Yes. 
And the well, second one, you went you would to the go west, back to the future, right? No, no, no. The second There's one, a... that was the third one. We goes third to Wild one? Wild okay. West. All right, I lost track. The second Where's one. Where's the one where he goes to the Bordello? That's, the second uh, one, he goes to the future. Sixty-ninth one. Uh, yeah. He goes to the future. Okay. And it's all everything's all changed. But they were right? all called Back to the Future, right? Right. 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 It's, I know, it's it's too much for you to handle. Exactly. <laughs> All I know is the guy from Cheers was on it. What's his name? Uh, obviously, the, the star of the movie. Oh, the old, the professor. What was his, what's his actual name? Well, no, it was actual? Taxi, Christopher Lloyd. Christopher yeah, Lloyd, yes, yeah, that's right. Not Cheers. He was, yeah, he was Jim yeah. and Taxi. Exactly. Yes. Right. He was great as Jim and Taxi. Right, He's a right. great Absolutely. actor, Christopher Jim Lloyd. Jim Ignatowski. Exactly. But getting back to Back to the Future, <laughs> they predicted this. They predicted this would happen. Well, they did. In 2015. Whoever wrote the script did. Well, yeah, I don't I mean, think they had a... lived a lot. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, that, so we have the clip. Do we have the clip? Do we I have, have it in here? Yes, you do. I don't know where you put it. Right Let's there. go to the clip now. The Cubs. Now, what, what year was uh, Back to the Future 2? 89, I believe. 1989, right? right? So they could have had no clue. I mean, you know. And the Cubs, no of course, clue. at that point hadn't won since 1908. No. Now you fast forward. How many years ago was that? 89, 99, uh, 20, 16 years 16, ago. 16. Is it? The only 46. no, it's more than 16 years yeah, ago. Is it? Is it? 89? Joe, you know that show at the, Dep at, the, at the AMC Deptford 8? What's that? Next next week. What? Well, what is Back to the, Back to the Future 2? <laughs> I swear to God. It's at play, the Deptford 8. It's playing in all these different theaters in New Jersey. The, uh, why? And they're doing this because of the Cubs? I don't know why. why? But they're doing, yeah, because in Deptford, New Jersey, yeah. they're all Cub fans. <laughs> well, they're a little behind the times. <laughs> I mean, yeah, tell me Who about it. Who does that? I'm in Who the area. Who time? <laughs> Ridiculous. No, they, they show uh, older movies all the time. I heard George get him free for that for that showing. Is that true? George it's only mandatory. Yes. It's, it's mandatory. mandatory. Absolutely. Now, so stick to I the get seat. them showing it, but it, has, it really has nothing to do with the Cubs. It must no, be I mean, the it's anniversary. Not, well, it's not even the anniversary. No, it should right? be 26 well, it's years. Kind of, it's just yeah. an old movie. But that it's they're still showing. it's it's poignant. It's poignant when you play this. It's kind of freaky. Let's go to the tape. Yes. Hey, kid. Come a hundred bucks, will you, and help save the clock tower? I uh, sorry, no. Come on, kid. That's an important historical landmark. Look, some other time. Lightning struck that thing sixty years ago. Wait a minute. Cubs win World Series against Miami? Yeah, it's something, huh? Who would have thought? Hundred to one shot. I wish I could go back to the beginning of the season, put some money on the Cubs. Well, I just meant the Miami. What did you just say? I said I wish I could go back to the beginning of the season. Put some money on the Cubbies. You are right about that, boss. There you have it. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd doing what we all want to do, go back to Vegas and bet on the Cubs. Now, Cubs wouldn't it be great if somebody, because of this movie, back in 1989, did some kind of a weird bet? Yeah. People bet on the Cubs every year. No, I'm saying no like what. in 89. Right. The, right. What do you? What, Pete Rose might have laid the wager. So I think like he got if suspended. If that they year. did that, like for 2015, I'm going to say that Back to the Future has it right, and they put a hundred dollars down. Then yeah, right. but that yeah. would be you like couldn't get it, you, you couldn't could, you make could get a bet odds. that far in advance. Vegas Robin? Be, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they could probably see a decade in advance, but 16 right. years down the line, I don't know. No, first of all, there's no place in the million to one. No prop bet for that time. No, they don't in advance. They don't even take prop bets like a day in advance. The only prop bet you probably could get. And I would assume someone's probably done this before with another team. Is that I'll bet you X that the Cubs win the World Series in the next ten years? No, nah, and you probably get odds to that. I'm, I'm, you might be right, but that, that, that not I in a book, think, not in a book. Yeah, but you know, offshore, offshore, exactly. Where they do all that kind of stupid gambling stuff. Not the kind of stupid gambling stuff we do on here on the mainland. Yeah, which is not bad on football, right? Except in Las Vegas and with your bookie. What the hell is this? It's a Titanic. It's a little zen. For this is just to bring everybody <laughs> down. I want everybody to calm down. Don't let go, Tony. Calm down. Don't let go. This just will breathe. this work for you? Just breathe now. I know, really. We need massages now. I feel my science is coming back. <laughs> Nathaniel, just breathe. You were on the Schuylkill Express. Yeah, the Schuylkill needed this. He was turning blue. He was about to activate his Heisenberg... <laughs> Machine gun loaded yeah. in the trunk. He will be the first on the Contra the button, curve. And it just goes around and around and around. So yeah. You guys didn't see Breaking Bad either. That's a fun. You've seen every mo mob every movie, mob movie, but not the greatest that. television show ever. In you your haven't opinion. seen. <laughs> you are putting Peter Bull sleep. I hear yeah. electric eyes yeah, saying. Zzz. Yeah, really. <laughs> Let me make you a little feel a little bit better, electric eye. There you go. <laughs> It's a moment of zen. It is. After a stressful day. Today was you, stressful. You sit right out. You, yeah, you pull right up. I did jury duty yesterday. What a heard. stressful day. I heard about it. Did they throw you off that? Yeah, I said guilty. Right, exactly. Guilty, you're Say, on. hang them high. String them up. Yeah, exactly. I don't care how you bring them. Yeah. Just bring them young. <laughs> and then the judge says, get out. Get out. <laughs> get out.
<laughs> All right, get rid of this end. I, 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 I wish I could relax some music at, at the end and just shut it down. Right. I have. You Impossible. know, I used to have the cassettes in my car. I bought. They were subliminal message cassettes. You remember they sold those? What, like it you're would, the best? That was like it a big thing for a long time. Yeah, like you music were... like that. Yes. But then you couldn't hear it, and then somebody subliminally, so, like, well, yeah, words over, say it. like, "Relax, right? You're gonna be good." That's not right. good to do while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, if you're stressed. <laughs> yeah, sure. It doesn't put you to sleep. It just gives you positive Energy. subliminal messages. Yeah. You know what? You, if that works, <laughs> you need to be playing. I don't those have a cassette again. deck anymore. <laughs> no, In fact, I mean, seriously. I went to my mom. Now my mom's doing re- re- refurbishing work, demolition, and I found. I got to go get it and, and show people. I found a realistic. Was it realistic? I got to go get that. Panasonic, there. right? A Panasonic, yeah, Panasonic cassette player. Right. What? That I bought. Back in 1974. I'll go get it. Uh-huh. Right? So I find it in my mother's basement. Dude, that cost like $800 back then? No, yeah. it was like, I, it's a, the price tag still at $38.95. Really? And at Lip Brothers? Where'd you get it at? I, I, no, I don't know. It just All has right. the price tag. It didn't say which, uh, which store. Probably Ideal. <laughs> ideal. <laughs> if you have a exactly. pack, no. So anyway, so I find this. I'm like, wow, I don't have a cassette deck anymore. I have all these old cassettes right. of my and stuff. nothing to play them on. My interviews, I got newscasts. All the stuff that I did was put on cassette back mm-hmm. in the day. Then they would put them on reel-to-reel tapes. Right. And then they went to CDs. I used to tape Harry Callis doing the Phillies. Exactly. Games, That's right right our the radio. Jim, the official archivist. Yeah, he I has used to everything do the same thing. On cassettes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So this is the tape recorder that I found the other wow. day. Wow. Oh, yeah, in the box, that. by the way. It was brand new, Tone? Never yeah. opened? In the box, in mint condition. Beautiful. Who, right? Who'd you buy that it's for? It's a Panasonic for me. And you never even opened it? No, I opened it, and I put batteries in it, but then I don't remember what I did with it. So I <laughs> find the box. I mean, it's in mint condition. It's a Panasonic auto stop. AC, battery, I think top everybody of had one of those at yeah. one point or another. I had, it's I heavy. Had one. So then I said, like, great, I got all these cassettes I can listen to. So then I opened the back where the batteries are, and the batteries have been in there forever. Now, uh, these they, are new did batteries. Did they explode? Yeah, they were, all, they, they were all corroded and rusty, right? Yeah. yeah it was so, just... I pull, so I take the batteries out. Ah, man, I said, I hope batteries work in it. Right. So I don't have any C batteries, because nobody has C batteries. No. no. You got double A's. You yeah. got triple A's. Maybe a couple nine volts here and there. Yes. I'm a double D fan. Well, who is? I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> come on. Goodness gracious. So anyway, so uh, Robin's at the store. said, get me some C batteries. Give me some damn C batteries. And a couple of D cups while you're there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Depending yeah. on which, uh, you know, you CBS you was going Although with Cs are good, too, depending on the... Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I hope so, because, you know, now that I've lost all this weight, well, you know, the no, Ds like are this. gone. Right, right. The Ds are gone. Right. <laughs> so I put the batteries in, right? And it doesn't work. Right? Then uh-huh. I, so I don't have the power cord for it. And you know, everybody has a million power cords at home, the, you know, for AC current. Sure. So I go online. I look up the model of the, of the uh, cassette uh, t- player. And yeah. I go to the store that sells Panasonic stuff. Right. And I buy it for five bucks. I said, hey, you know, I got the, I'll, I'll pay five bucks. Amazon shipping free. So it's right. like $6 with tax. I get the thing. I try to plug it in. It doesn't fit. It doesn't of course. Fit. Of course. So now I got a cassette. Hey, I, I'm going through everything possible. To be able to listen to some cassettes and find some radio gold and some good stuff from back in the day. I mean, I got like Flyers, Stanley Cup interviews from the 70s right, on right. there. Yeah, all Fred the good Shiro. stuff's on cassettes. It's all on there. <laughs> yeah, but but meanwhile, I can't, he's, can't use it. He's exactly. got a white snake tape in there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. What is know. that? No, right. you know what was in there? It's, it's still in man. there. No, look. It's a, it's a... Let me eject it here. Yeah, I'm saying, look, it's right. What? Perry Como, the Perry, Perry Como, Como Christmas album. Perry Who didn't have that? Chris- Perry Como Wait, Christmas album. Do you hear what I hear, Tony? Yes. That's got to be on it's there. Hot number two on there side you go. one. I, I know it. My grandmother had do that in heavy rotation. Yes. I, yes. I went, I went White Snake. He, he went Perry. Guys Clay. Yeah. Perry Como. Perry, somewhere in the middle. That was sitting in this cassette, and it's brand new. Look at that. <laughs> Brand, I mean, that cassette. You just blew some dust from 1974 into my face. I had some angel dust down there I found, too, but that's for a different show. But anyway. It was 74. Now I, mean, I got on. a cassette deck. It looks it's in great condition other than the battery it compartment, is. which is I just is took a picture out. of it and posted it. And now I can't find a stinking plug for it. Meanwhile, Brian Baldinger is going to join us. Robin will have an update about coffee tonight. Nice. Yes, coffee, yes. Co- coffee I'm, talk. And I'm thinking grounded. that this is explaining a whole coffee lot talk. about Tony Bruno. Coffee really? talk. Coffee. coffee talk. Remember coffee talk? Did you drink it too much yeah. on Saturday Night Live? No, no, I'm no. all the <laughs> I'll give you guys coffee. a topic. <laughs> coffee talk. Now, who was it that did coffee talk? It that was, was Mike, Mike Myers. Myers. Yeah, yeah, Mike Myers and... Um, Mike Myers. Just, yeah, 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 it was, was, Mike was Myers. it only him? That's it. Sometimes there was a guest no, on there. No, no, no. They always have guests. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Mike Myers is the only one who ever did Coffee Talk. That's right. He was for, like, You might be thinking about Dana Carvey doing Church Lady. 
Yes, that's who oh. she's thinking of, the church lady. But didn't he always have somebody sitting next to him? Yes, he coffee? would bring in guests. Yeah. No. Barbara Streisand. Oh, here it is. Here's an episode. Welcome to Coffee Talk with your host, Linda Richmond. Oh, that was actually his mother-in-law. That's his Welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Linda Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say happy birthday to my daughter, Robin. Happy birthday, Bubba. Oh, only appropriate. <laughs> okay, appropriate. now, this show used to be hosted by my friend Paul Baldwin, but he developed Spilkus in his Connecticut zoink. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's in Boca Raton, Florida, recovering nicely. Thank you very much. This is my best friend, Liz Rosenberg. <laughs> Is that Madonna? No. Linda, don't talk to me. I'm having a bad hair day. No, it, it is sure Madonna. Is. I Madonna. Think it is Madonna. Yeah, it was this Madonna. Is my mother, she's visiting from Scottsdale. <laughs> <laughs> this show, that, that segment just wasn't Jewish enough for right. my taste. Right, right. <laughs> but that was funny, though. Mike Myers. That's back when SNL was funny. Yeah, that's right. the yeah. last time I probably exactly. watched SNL, right. I think. Me too. And we were oh, talking okay. about, uh, you know, Shaq was talking about Kardashians and the, the, uh, the sad situation going on out in Nevada. Yes. With Lamar Odom. Of course, played for the Lakers, played for the Clippers, and was out there having fun at one of the uh, legal brothels out in, in Nevada. He was, spent a couple days out there. Yeah, actually. he was. Yeah, he was, he uh, was chilling out there, obviously legal prostitution. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then they, uh, they found him unresponsive in a hotel room mm -hmm. on Tuesday afternoon, uh, 70 miles outside of Vegas. The weird part is... When they when they called the ambulance, they brought a medevac helicopter, but he couldn't fit in it because yeah, he, he was six fit. foot ten, yep. and they couldn't get him in a helicopter. Yep. So they had to get an ambulance and take him to the closest uh, hospital that could handle mm -hmm. those types of cases, which is seventy miles away. Mm -hmm. That's how far they had to take him, Brutal. and he was in, in a room at the Love Ranch. Of course, we had the owner yeah. Dennis Hoff of the uh, Moonlight Bunny Ranch. There are multiple legal brothels out there in the desert of, uh, of Nevada. Yes. And uh, he was in one of those, the one that was called the Love Ranch. And he was taken by an uh, ambulance, as we mentioned. And he, according to Dennis Hoff, he said there was no knowledge of any other drugs other than herbal Viagra and cognac he was drinking. So we don't know what's going on. And I know he was fighting for his life mm -hmm. at this hour. And hopefully he can pull through. But mm -hmm. a lot of love going out there. And obviously his uh, situation with with the Kardashian family yeah. and a lot of people. Let's go, go to Baldy Live now. I believe everything is working fine. <laughs> and Brian Baldinger does join us. Uh, the ball oh, is ringing now. Oh, we're going to get him live as a ring? Are yeah, we phoning a friend? Live. Oh, I love this. You can hear him answering the phone. Hello, this is Regis. <laughs> <laughs> Baldy. Hey, Tony. How are you, man? We got you. Yeah, man. It's, Could, a, it's not that. Our phone works here, Tony. We just got to give him a good connection. We're good. All right, because I know you, when I was tweeting with you earlier today and texting, we were talking about uh, worrying about the sound quality, but we did it last week with Dick Vermeil. It sounded great, and it's week number two on our Podcast One podcast, and I said, we got to get Brian Baldinger on, because Baldy is NFL Network. You see him everywhere, and he's a man who knows how to break the game of football down properly, unlike Robin. Baldy, how you doing? <laughs> last time we talked to you, you had just had a knee procedure. How, what's going on with your knee? Oh, man, I'm still coming back, Tony. I had a staph infection in my knee. They had to cut it open and, you know, cut out all that crap. And so it's just been coming back. But I've been so busy, I don't really have time to think about it. But it's I'm not 100% yet, Tony. I can't I can't do a standing head to toe in the yoga. I can't do a split right now. But it's it, it'll get back there. It's just not where it was this summer. And the concern, obviously, with the MRSA stuff that's going on with the Giants and Tampa Bay, was there, was there ever a moment when you thought, oh, wow, man, you know, there's an infection in there. they got to go clean it out. And then you hear about the MRSA going on in Tampa a couple of years ago, and now most recently with Daniel Fells uh, of the Giants. Oh, I was scared to death, Tony. I, I was on my way up to uh, the Jets training camp to do a show for NFL Network, like the first week of camp, August 1st or 2nd, and I got in a call from a hospital uh, where I was at in Boston. I was up doing something with the Patriots, and uh, my knee was bothering me. They drained it. They, you know, they cultured it. And they're like, you got to get to the hospital right now, man. you got an infected knee. And I was like, I knew, how, you know, I knew what that meant. The next day, literally, Tony, probably uh, 18 hours after I got the call, I was being operated on. So it was like immediate. They, you know, I mean, I wasn't crazy about opening up my knee, but I didn't really have a choice. And I knew that if you didn't do it immediately, what's going on with Daniel Fells, I can completely understand what's happening. What happened to Carl Nix, all these NFL players. I mean, it is, 
it's serious. It's, it's real serious. And if it hits your blood or it hits to your bone, you're going to lose part of your body if it gets that far. So I, I didn't fool around, Tony. I got it done right away. And I'm thankful because I don't have any infection anymore. It's out of my body. Great. Brian Baldinger joining us, and we're talking football. But earlier, uh, one of the big stories, of course, we'll get into some of the nuts and bolts, but the big story up in New England, and you were talking about the Patriots, is Nate Solder, their left tackle, is now done for the year with a torn right bicep. And it happened on one of the sacks. Remember, Brady got sacked like five times yeah. in the first half by the Cowboys. Yep. And on one of those sacks, uh, Solders went around to try to stop uh, Tyrone Crawford from getting to him, and that's when he tore his bicep. And it's amazing when you look at the line, uh, the Patriots line, I mean, they've, they've had 11 different combinations of guys playing offensive line, but losing a guy like Solder, is that a, a huge loss, or is it they could just throw guys in there and, and continue to play well? No, I think it's a big loss, Tony. I mean, they've been juggling. I mean, they're, they're starting two rookies as it is, um, and they're playing three, rookie, three or four rookie offensive linemen all together. Um, but Solder and Sebastian Bowman, the two tackles, they were a staple. Those guys were kind of lined up every Sunday. They were very big. They're athletic. Solder was extremely athletic, really did a good job of protecting Brady. And without him, you look at Marcus Cannon going in there. He's kind of their utility infielder. I mean, he just doesn't have the foot quickness or athletic ability out there um, that Nate Solder does. Not many people do. He's a former tight end, great athlete. They threw the touchdown pass to him in the, you know, the divisional championship game last year. But it's a big loss, Tony. I, I, that one's going to be hard for them to overcome. I, I don't know how it, you know, how they overcome that. Like, you know, they always seem to overcome the injuries, but that one's, that one's a little trickier and a little tougher to overcome. Ryan Baldinger, NFL Network, joining us. You know, I was looking at all the quarterbacks, and, and obviously, you know, Tom Brady is playing lights out. He got sacked five times, but then you think, oh man, the Cowboys are really beating him up, and then all of a sudden he gets into the groove and they go on and win that game easily. But you look at the stats, I mean, guys getting sacked a lot. Now, Brady obviously hasn't gotten sacked a lot, uh, even though he got sacked five times. But you look like Russell Wilson has been sacked 22 times already in Seattle. And then Alex Smith has been sacked 21 times, and Peyton Manning's been hit 12 times. So it's amazing when you see these guys, especially Russell Wilson, because you don't think, if you don't watch the Seahawks every week, that that guy's being caught many times. Well, I think he creates some of it himself as much as he scrambles, but the offensive line in Seattle hasn't played well. I mean, they, they, um, they lost their center, obviously, in the trade, Max Unger, and so that was the one position they had to fix. Um, they moved the right tackle, Justin Britt, to the left guard, and that hasn't worked out real well. They're trying to fix the, uh, the right tackle position. So they've struggled. Um, Alex Smith, look, the right side of the offensive line in San Francisco, you know, Eric Pierce, I mean, they're, they're backup players. And they're starting. And really, what you're looking at, Tony, around the league is really the poorest offensive line play I can ever remember. Most teams don't have five starters. Forget about any depth if you lose anybody. And so that's the biggest issue. And there's going to be you're going to hear a lot of talk going forward about you know a spring developmental football league, which we desperately need in this NFL to find out and try to develop some of these guys because the way training camps are, Tony, you, you can't hit anymore. I mean, you don't see these guys hitting and in college or just pass protecting in college? Uh, Sam, Brad yeah, Sam Bradford uh, actually has a good whole game for a change. I know he threw the two costly interceptions in the first half, but they were moving the ball up and down the field. The guy has uh, eight touchdowns, six interceptions. He's got 1,281 yards already and sacked seven times. Are they coming out of it? Because, you know, we saw him look good in a couple of preseason games, especially that one game where he played two drives and he looked like a machine. And then all of a sudden, his offense has been struggling. The offensive line has been a mess. And then, boom, all of a sudden, last Sunday, the offensive line plays as a unit and looks really good for a change. Well, they did, Tony. I, I did that game for national radio. But the Saints might be the most depleted roster in the NFL. I mean, they're just not a good football team. And really, I think the Eagles took advantage of that. Now, you know, to say that they're coming out of it, I got to see it. They haven't won two games in a row since last November. It's a long time. You know, this team is three and six in their last nine games going back to Thanksgiving. So until they put, you know, two games, two full games together without turning the ball over, they've got 10 turnovers, Tony, in five games. I mean, they led the league last year with 31 turnovers. I mean, right now they're on a pace to have 32. So until they stop turning the ball over, you know, and they can stack, you know, some good games together for four quarters. I'm not ready to say that they're out of it. Uh, I think, I, I think, you know, I mean, some of the things that have bothered the Eagles, 
you know, whether it's the stunting defensive line, things like that. I mean, the Saints didn't do any of that. So, you know, maybe Monday night against the Giants, they, they put another good game together. And then we could kind of say that the Eagles are coming out. Yeah, but I'm saying you, you know as a guy who played offensive line and understands the position better than anybody that's listening to this podcast or many guys who've ever played football at any level, is that what we hear is, oh, you know, Andy, we, we actually had this, uh, Luigi and I had this conversation and argument last week about the offensive line. There's no doubt that Chip Kelly has not addressed it as far as draft picks or signing guys as free agents, but the loss of Todd Harriman's and Evan Mathis, people are pretty much saying that though that was basically tearing this line apart. Well, Mathis, we know that story. Todd Harriman, has he been cut by the Indianapolis Colts? Because I know he went there, he played, then he was uh, benched. He's been benched. And then, he he's, benched he's, and then he's inactive. So the Todd Harriman's one is confusing to me because when Luigi, who's here with us tonight, said that the, the Eagles let the whole offensive line go to hell, I, I disagree with him vehemently. Yeah, but well, you should. You know, and Luigi's <laughs> wrong. I mean, Todd Harriman's... Is, you know, I mean, look, I, I, I told Todd, I've told everybody, you play as long as you can in the two more years. Well, Todd got his two more years. He, he played eight games last year before he got hurt, and he, he started this year, and he got hurt. He got two years of getting paid, and he's not going to play a lot of football. I mean, right now, you know, if you watch Evan Mathis, he's struggling in Denver. So I don't have any problem with them not, you know, not bringing Evan Mathis back and releasing Todd. But you have to restock yourselves, especially when you see Jason Peters kind of fall off last December. And for them not to draft anybody, for them not to look at free agency, I think that was a mistake. Brian Baldinger breaking it down as an offensive lineman does. One last, one last thing, Baldy. I want to get to this, uh, the NFL getting ripped, and it does all the time. The Cam Hayward situation in Pittsburgh. You saw that his dad was Ironhead Hayward, and he died in 2006 of cancer. So he put the uh, eye black patches under his eyes, and he had Ironhead on there. Uh, to remember his father, and they find him $5,787 because it violates the NFL's uh, uniform policy uh, for wearing eye black. And then you have, the, in the same team, you have the D'Angelo Williams wants to wear pink outside of the month yep. of October, yep. and the league says you can't do that. Where do you fall on that? Because I get it. Remember the old Jim McMahon days with headbands and guys were trying to promote products that weren't league products? Do you think the NFL is a little too crazy with this you know, not yeah. allowing guys to, to honor their parents who died of cancer. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I see D'Angelo, you know, Williams with the, uh, you know, the pink braids in honor of his mother. I see, you know, what Ironhead, you know, what Cam did in honor of his father, who was just the greatest human being ever. I, I think, you know, if you have the right cause, I think it's. I mean, look, it's a publicity league. We want to generate publicity in a lot of good ways. I think those. I mean, if I was announcing a game. And I saw Cam Hayward with that. I would say something about his father. I'd honor his father. Same thing with D'Angelo Williams. I think they're way too crazy. I remember when, you know, uh, the one year where uh, Peyton Manning wanted to honor Johnny Unitas and wear black high-top shoes in the league, you know, Peyton said, well, go ahead and find me. I'm honoring Johnny Unitas, the greatest cold ever. Like, I do think that it's way too crazy when it comes to that. And I think they're wrong in doing it. No, I agree with you. And I, you know, the fines are ridiculous too. I mean, you know, five thousand seven hundred dollars for a guy who's making sixty million dollars in the in the case of Cam Hayward. That's not the big deal. It's just the whole. Wait a minute. You know, we, we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month where everybody wears pink. If, but then, if you want to wear pink outside of it, or if you want to honor your dad who died of cancer during, you know, a breast a cancer awareness month, not just breast cancer, but certainly breast cancer with the sure. pink ribbons. But cancer, period. So you only pick one month out of the year where you're going to worry about cancer? Well, no. I mean, I mean, look, there's all kinds of cancer. You know, it's all bad. And unfortunately, it strikes, you know, a lot of us that are, you know, a lot of people that are close to us. And so I, I just think that, you know, you have to look, the league has to look deeper at the cause of why somebody would do, you know, put the eye black on or whatever. And I just think they're way out of line in finding somebody like that that has such a, uh, you know, a close emotional tie to what he's doing. Brian Baldinger is always emotional, has ties to the league. You see him on NFL Network. Looking good, man. I watch you all the time on there on that, that morning thing where you get together with the rest of the boys. It's yeah, well, yeah, the aftermath, man, on Mondays and around the NFL. You know, I'm, I'm not a giant lover. I'm not a giant hater. They t they t and everybody says this team could be this and the Eagles could be this if they made field goals and their kicker didn't miss four points against Atlanta. They should have won that game. Right. The Giants should be 5-0. and oh. Of all the – you look at yeah, all these teams. Yeah. The first two games they lost, they choked away 10-point leads. Mm -hmm. So they were in position to win their first two Played games. The game, and then that Dallas game, which is the absolute 
disaster. Yeah, well, that where they was. didn't know. They forgot what was going on with the yeah, clock the at the clock. end. And Eli gets a brain cramp. Right. And then the running back. And Eli's been on fire this year. Oh, he's playing great. On I'm telling fire. you right now. We look at this NFC East, which is a joke. It's a total joke. I think the Giants are the best team in the NFL. Now oh, I know I they. So. I know Odell Beckham got banged up in right. the game. Right. And uh, and Randall got banged up in the game. So everybody's getting nicked. Right. And the bottom line is going to be survival of the fittest. Exactly. You know, Washington's not that good. I mean, Kirk Cousins, they got good running game, but their defense is up and down, and Cousins is up and down. Mm-hmm. There's so many up and down players. There's no real consistently good players in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I mean, Brady obviously is playing great. Yeah. Well. And you look around. Uh, I mean, I got all these yeah, quarterback but, but, numbers. Right. Tell you, I, just, I just hand you the one stat on, on that on the sheet on of Josh paper. McCown. Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, for for all the money that's spent on all these other guys and all these guys that are underachieving, like the Russell Wilsons of the world, like yep. you were saying, Tone. A guy like Josh McCown, he's got six touchdowns, one interception. He's thrown for like twelve hundred yards already, and he's throwing to nobody. He's, th- he's throwing to Travis Benjamin. He had, they have no running game. I know. He's doing it by himself, mm-hmm. and people are calling for Johnny Manziel. Mm-hmm. Josh no, McCown Cleveland. is helping them win. No doubt about it. Josh McCown and that, that game over the weekend was tremendous, that Cleveland game. That Cleveland Browns game, they yeah. should have lost that game. Sure. Yeah. And then they find a way to win. They go overtime and they win it. No, 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 no. Cleveland lost. Did Cleveland lose in overtime? Are you sure? Oh, you t- oh no, no, no. no, no. They no won. I, was Cleveland talk- won. I was thinking about the week prior week to San Diego. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, that's right. They, that's the San right. Diego game. But they, they came back and then they win it in overtime. Mm-hmm. And, and Josh McCown's playing great. You know, some of the other. Marcus Mariota. Mm-hmm. He's got he's been sacked 14 times already. And Tennessee, he's had his numbers are good. 18, 82, 82 completions, 120, 82 of 128. 64% completion. He's thrown for over 1000 yards already, but his team stinks. Right, and what's the one thing he's not doing? What everybody thought he was Run. Gonna, exactly. Everybody thought he was going to come out of college and be a running quarterback. And he only could play for Chip Kelly, remember? Correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way Marcus Mariota with that right. Oregon offense nope. So what's Tennessee thinking? They don't yeah, they need have a him. connection, him and Chip. Now, what are they going to do? No, listen, Mariota is still yet to be proven. He's still a rookie in this league, and he's barely six. That's barely six weeks old. But the kid's proven he can stand in the pocket and throw the damn no football. No doubt about it. And he's taking a beat. He's been sacked 14 times already mm-hmm. in his first five games I mean, down there in Tennessee. You look right now. Who's looked better, Winston or Mariota? Oh, um, Winston's been up and down. I mean, Winston's had. Sh- Winston, Winston throws a lot of interceptions. Tony, w- Jameis Winston for all the. Um, uh, he was getting all this praise for being so so far ahead of everyone uh, as far as, like, understanding the game. Being ready for the co- pros, co- absolutely. Exactly. He's been tricked and duped by, by NFL defenses more than anyone I've ever seen. He's, he, he gets lulled into taking these um, – lulled, excuse me, into taking these – and making mistake throws. Like, he just gets baited by cornerbacks left and right. And you don't – but you don't see Mariota making these mistakes. No, but Mariota's, Mariota's – uh, I mean, his team's bad. He's, he's got he's eight touchdowns, three interceptions. So that's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good for a rookie quarterback. Sure. And his numbers are decent, and I mentioned he gets sacked a lot. And that's why I brought up Russell Wilson when we were talking to Baldy. I mean, Russell Wilson, would you think that Russell Wilson's been sacked 22 times already? No, it isn't. In five games? No, it isn't spending a billion dollars on the, and draft picks on, I mean, and the trade for Jimmy Graham supposed to make that, you know, life a lot easier And you saw they, Russell they, Wilson, and, and it hasn't. And, and what do they have? Defense, and their defense blew a 24-7 lead yeah. at home. And he's, my Cincinnati fan, and he's my fantasy quarterback, by the way. No, Russell, Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. No, everybody's, everybody was thinking that uh, you rich. know Jimmy Graham's going to go over there and set the world on fire with Russell Wilson. It's not happening. And I didn't see it happening to begin with anywhere because he, I don't think he fits what they try to do down there. There are a lot of bad you teams know why? in the NFL. Because really? a guy like Jimmy Graham is set on his quarterback being in the pocket. He's running the route, and he knows where his quarterback is. He knows where the ball's going to go. A guy like Russell Wilson, all he does is improvise. Yeah, so but, guys, when he, but when he improvises and he, and he breaks away, he still has the ability to find a guy and get him the ball. Right, but, he doesn't, but the, the receivers he, have, he has are not capable of, of doing that. Like an Antonio Brown-type wide receiver who, when the play, play breaks down and Ben Roethlisberger rolls out and he just improvises and goes all over the damn field and Ben just knows how to find him, that's a wide receiver who will help a quarterback like that. Doug Baldwin and Javon Curse, I mean, Jermaine Curse and uh, – uh, what's the other guy? Uh, uh, Matthews, the, the 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 kid they p- uh, put out in the, the Super Bowl last year. The tight year. end? No, no, no. The uh, the real tall wide receiver. Uh, his name is his last name is Matthews. I forget his first name. But they brought him out in the Super Bowl. He had like seven catches for like. Yeah. Uh, what happened to that white guy? That gangly looking white dude. Is he still on the team? The the tight the end. wide receiver. Yeah. Oh, uh, the tight end. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Yeah, that's right. One there. of the Wilson brothers. He has, yeah, more, he, uh, he has more catches than Jimmy Graham. Does. He does. Yep. I haven't even seen him on the field. You can usually tell because he's got the long, yeah, stringy he's on there. blonde hair, long locks. He's on there. I just think that. It, he, uh, he doesn't have the supporting cast around him 
to help him out, especially with Marshawn Lynch not in the game. Exactly. And that running game, because that passing game feeds off of the of, off the running game. They're a run team. They're a run team first before they're a pass team. And without them running the ball, they're they're just stuck in sand, man. They're not going anywhere. I tell you, to me, the most impressive team. I know Cincinnati's having a great year, but they're good. But I they're mean, a fluke. Because wait till the playoffs and then nah, see what I don't happens. know. Matt may change. I mean, we say that all the time about guys. But I think they may be, you know, Andy Dalton gets ripped. Oh, he plays well in the regular season. Then he doesn't do anything in the playoffs. They're playing really at a no, high they're, level. They're He's got a fantastic. lot of weapons. Yeah, they've never been this good. They're playing the fantastic. Season. But I just, like I said, I have to see him win one playoff game before I, don't, before I say they're not a fluke. Well, I get, they do I, every I, it's year, a report Tony. card to me. It's about what, who's playing great right now. Atlanta's playing great right now. Mm -hmm. that can't or, or, even though the Eagles should have beaten them. Atlanta's playing great. Obviously, Denver is a fluke because their defense is so good. I mean, they have they're no offense, yep. and they're 5-0. and oh. yep. and You look at the teams that are 5-0. and oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. The Falcons, here's the, here's the most remarkable stat to me. The Arizona Cardinals are plus 100. That means what? they have scored 100 more points than they have given up. Mm -hmm. No team in football is even close to that. To me, the Arizona Cardinals of plus 100 is a staggering number when mm -hmm. you think about well, he, that. Here's the thing. They, they beat teams down mm -hmm. when they win. Well, you see what happens when you keep Carson Palmer healthy? Exactly. And they were, that's the same situation last year. If Carson Palmer doesn't get hurt, they may have been in the Super Bowl instead of the uh, Seattle well, Seahawks. Look, I mean, Larry Fitzgerald disappeared. Why? Because John Skelton and Ryan Lindley and all these guys exactly. are throwing the ball to him. You, you get a guy who can deliver the damn football where it's supposed to be, and Larry Fitzgerald's going to turn around and be a pro bowler like he's always been his entire career. And the Bengals are plus 47, the other 5-0 and o team. So the teams that are good – you know, are going to be up there as far as points given, points scored. Point. It's all about offense. Everybody talks about it's got to be about defense. Uh -uh. The best teams in football put up numbers. Okay. That's what it's all about. Now, when you get to the playoffs, it's a different story. But to me, the story so far five games into the NFL season is teams with really good offenses are beating defenses. There aren't very many shutouts. You're seeing a lot of wild and wacky games, and you're seeing teams that can run up, not necessarily run up scores, but can score points win games. But I think the Falcons are probably the shakiest of the bunch, considering the fact, like you said, Tony, they should have lost that Eagles game and they should have lost the Redskins game. Yeah, but they found a way because Kirk but Cousins throws a horrible interception exactly. in overtime. But, that's, but what I'm saying is, though, is I, I think they're... And bad coaching, by the way, by, the, terrible by Washington. Coaching. Terrible So, coaching. I mean, that, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. Washington's coach did a horrible job, and, or they would have beaten the Atlanta Falcons. You're absolutely right. They should have beat the, the Atlanta Falcons. I, I think... I think Atlanta's a little fluky at 5-0. and um, I think Denver, It's still a great Dan, – Dan Quinn right no, now is coach a great of the year. Story is he not coach of the year already absolutely. if the season were to end right now? How yeah, can he not be? Now. When you consider how bad that team That's was last year. Tony, they were, they were picked to finish mm. dead last. And you bring in a guy who's a defensive coach, and you bring in a new offensive coordinator, and Matt Ryan looks mm -hmm. as, as locked in mm -hmm. as I've ever seen him look in look this time of the season. And, you you know, know, so did you ever tweeze it? your eyebrows? Yeah. Oh, oh man, I hate that. Yes, I have. I've manscaped. I've taken care of myself. Absolutely. I've manscaped, but not, not eyebrows. Yes, not I eyebrows. have. When I see a dude with really nicely trimmed oh, eyebrows, I hate that. I want to go over there and, and give do him a something. smack. Me too. I know. I agree. I want to do something. He's waxed, I'm pointy. Not, I'm, oh man, yeah, that's disgusting. Squeeze them. I'm just saying, but I've cleaned them up. <laughs> have you have you have you been waxed? Have you waxed I've, your eyebrows? Absolutely, yes. Your eyebrows too? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, man. now yes. now here's a question. That's just ridiculous, Has man. have <laughs> any of the men here have you waxed down there? No, no, hell no. No. Just scaping. That's Kidding crazy me? Talk. Because my, I've asked my waxer, no. fantastic Melissa. Are you kidding me? I don't even like pulling one hair out of my eyebrows. They, they think I want to have fifty hairs ripped right. off at one she time. She says that there are men that go that. I'm go sure see there her. are. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, that, I if, if a woman has has facial hair and she wants to wear facial hair, that's her business. That's her right. Whatever. All I'm saying is, don't get upset when people look at you and wonder why the hell you have a beard. <laughs> that's all. That's all I'm saying is, don't get, don't give people the crooked look. That they're looking at you because, yes, you look different from everyone else. And if you want to look different from everyone else, you're going to draw attention to yourself and people are going to look at you. Are they judging you? No. They're looking at you. They're not saying you're a bad person. They're saying, hey, that lady's probably a sweet gal, but she's got a beard. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Tom. That's it. Now, I must reply yes. to the people. <clears throat> Bullet Bob is asking if I've ever had a Brazilian. <laughs> I've tried one before, but they, they were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, I think that that is They're a very different central. Kind of, yeah. I'm just saying, Brazilian cool, yeah. is the yeah, only yeah. way to go. Love Brazilian Ladies, yes. if you Our good friend, not, uh, homemade delicious Brazilian. Uh, yeah. Is she really? Yes. But I let me tell that. you, ladies, if you've not gone in for a Brazilian, you need to try it at least once and know the freedom. It is fantastic. Let me tell you fellas out there, too, you need to go out and get yourself a Brazilian. They're amazing. 
What? Amazing. Not that he's Brazil? talking about a Brazilian person. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're kidding me? You scare me for a minute. Portuguese though. chicks? Yes. Are you kidding me? This is better than talking about quarterbacks and uh, it pick is. plays Much in the better. NFL, right? Much better. This is real stuff. Yes. This is, the people Body deal hair. with this. Everybody listening to this podcast right. deals with this. For example, our good friend Nathaniel, his wife. Now, how close is your wife now? How many weeks away are we? Five. Five weeks? I'm going to say it's four. I'm going to go with four. Just We're going to speed it like up. like even bit. numbers around here. Now, when, when you yeah. have a pregnant wife, and that's pretty close. Damn right. Is grooming out the window right now? Does she still groom? <laughs> Or do you groom for her? <laughs> that would be. I don't hard. remember because <laughs> that would when be I had my kids, that it would be, be a hard reach around. I got It's hard enough now to try <laughs> to get down there. Reach she, around. She could probably. She has a hard time tying her shoes. <laughs> yeah, when she you're probably that can't day. even see down there. No. Right now. Like that a would, lot of guys I know, they right, can't really. See I know. the stall. They can't see down there either. What the follicles going on here? That's all I want to know. <laughs> now I have to say though. If, it's off the rails. If you gro- <laughs> if you groom each other down there, that's love. That's true love. That's yes, that's weird. insane. If you trust, that's <laughs> weird. That's no, weird. That's, that's 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 are, are you out of your mind? Like a woman near me with a razor? Are you seriously really? Then mental? you don't. You're usually you're, when they were the, near me with a razor, they're Sicilian. So I had a woman that. shave my head on national TV with a straight yeah, razor. And that was yeah, but she had wit- you had witnesses. Your head and your balls are two totally different things. <laughs> exactly. Not well, really. They're pretty funny. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be pretty funny. Why you shaved? Nice Give him a little goatee. Look just like him. <laughs> I think the podcast is just about over, isn't it? Look, the, it only, is. the only thing it is definitely the over. one thing about this show it's great is that you know you can say things like this and it's all in good fun though, man. We're not here to really piss anybody off. It's no, all you already fun. did that. It's too I late now. Anybody. I, I don't hate anybody. It's fine. Listen, you want to like I said, you want to be a woman with a beard, be a woman with a beard. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just making fun of it. If, if there's you can make fun of me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We do. Funny is we do funny. all the time. I know you do. Funny is funny to me. It doesn't matter. <sighs> hamster tweet. I don't have that. Yes. I'm sorry. She's a big fan. Hamster she is tweet. a huge tweet. As okay. AI huge once said, sweetheart. Big Giants fan. She says, I just it's tuned funny in. To me too. <laughs> and I'm rolling on the floor laughing. She is. <laughs> big Giants fan. Uh, yes, she is. She's a huge big huge Giants fan. And Sacramento. She can't King wait until the Dodgers. She wants the Dodgers out of the playoffs. Rack the Dodgers. Out. She They're wants out. them out. So now, Tony, we we are definitely over. We're like ten minutes over. We here. are. Yes. What time? We we went we went well, long. We, it's all this hair we talk. We went a little bit long uh, with all the uh, grooming talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, we're only about five minutes over. Okay. Um, but we have this new out, which is shorter than we normally have. Okay, so let me thank everybody then. Let me thank. Because we got to get the timing Brian right. Brian Baldinger. <laughs> yes. From NFL Network, great guy, great, good friend, and knows his stuff about the National Football League. Of course, Nathaniel Dotson. You can follow him at Truvid. How do you spell? How do you say it again? Tutvid. Tutvid. Why can't I get that one right? Tutvid. T U T V I D. King Tut. Right. Just like think of King Tut, Tut Video V I D. Tutvid. And that, of course, is at Tutvid on Twitter and Tutvid.com, right? On the intranet. And then you can follow <laughs> Joe Corrado, J Corrado19 on Twitter. <laughs> you can follow Luigi Curto22 on Twitter. And I'm sure a lot of people will be following him tonight. <laughs> yeah, or unfollowing him. <laughs> you following me? Are you following me, camera guy? Yes. All right. And don't forget, Miss Robin Austin. Follow her. I'm, yes. I'm finally, I, I'm, I'm over 3,000. Nice. I'm like at 3,294. <laughs> Woo! Tremendous. <laughs> and I don't know. forget, you can follow me at Tony Bruno Show. Podcast One, here the podcast 24-7. And, of course, YouTube and Nathaniel will uh, slice and dice this thing and get it up there. <laughs> In a couple of days for your dining and dancing pleasure. The video portion of it on our YouTube channel and Tony Bruno on YouTube. So we'll see you again soon. Very, very soon. Just follow us and check out the website, TonyBrunoShow.com, for all the latest. And we'll see you soon here on the podcast. Stay groomed. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive either. And God bless America. Thanks for listening to The Tony Bruno Show. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Download new episodes every Thursday at podcast1.com. That's podcastone.com. Come back soon.